Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to provide a short demonstration of how to perform the independent samples t-test using SPSS. Before we get started, let me note that underneath the video description, you will find a link to the SPSS data file that I'm using, so you can actually download the data to follow along. Additionally, you will find a link to a PowerPoint, and that PowerPoint goes into a lot more detail than I'm going to be covering in this video. In particular, the PowerPoint discusses what the independent samples t-test and, and why you might use it. Uh, it goes into interpretation of the results, including effect size and it even covers assumptions related to this test. So be sure to download that PowerPoint to learn more. So here we have a copy of the SPSS data file opened up and I'm going to just basically follow along with the first example that's provided in the PowerPoint. So for that first example we were essentially testing whether there is a difference uh, in means between individuals identified as male or female on a measure of perceived threat. So in that example the independent variable was gender ID and the dependent variable which we'll scroll over to is perceived threat. So the gender ID variable two is also uh, coded one for identified as male and two identified as female. So what we're going to do to run our analysis is go to analyze go down to compare means and then independent samples t-test. So we'll click on that. We'll move the gender ID variable down to the grouping variable box and we'll click on define groups. So it's here that we include the values on our variable uh, representing the two groups. So we had a value of one representing individuals identified as male and a value of two indicating person identified as female. Now I want to mention that the values that are provided right here need to match up with the values on the original variables. So if you're using a different coding system such as zero for identified as male and one for identified as female, then instead of using one and two right here, we would use zero and one. So just keep that in mind. Nevertheless, we'll go ahead and reset this back to one and two because those are the codes that we're using. We'll click on continue and so now you'll see where it says gender ID the question marks that were previously there are um, gone and you see the actual values of 1 and 2. So now we'll scroll down and find our perceived threat variable and move it over to the test variables box. Next we'll click on OK and we get our output. So you'll see first where it says group statistics, we have the descriptive statistics uh, for our two groups. So you can see we have the sample sizes for the two groups. We had 223 persons identified as male, 181 identified as female. We have the sample means, which are 3.4 and 3.79 for persons identified as male and female respectively. So you can see that uh, those individuals identifying as female their perceived threat score was higher uh, uh, than that of males, um, or their, their average threat scores were higher than that for males. So you can see next we have our standard deviations for uh, the two groups as well. Down below we've got our independent samples t-test results. So there are a couple of things to kind of point out. First off, you'll notice that we have two rows of information. One row that says equal variance is assumed, the other one that says equal variance is not assumed. So basically one of the assumptions of the independent samples t-test is that we have equal variances for the two groups. And so if we have a violation of that particular assumption, which is also referred to as homoskedasticity, then that can lead to a bias with respect to the interpretation of our results. So in particular it can lead to either an inflation of type 1 or type 2 error depending on the nature of the violation. So when we're looking at our results, one of the things that we want to do is to evaluate whether that assumption is met. And so the first part of the output that's given right here is Levine's test for equality of variances. So simply put, this test is a test of homogeneity of variances or homoskedasticity. And this test result is going to bear on whether we use the t-test results associated with row 1 or the t-test results associated with row 2. So really a, a, just a very simple way of looking at this, uh, right here we have a SIG column and this is containing the p-value for that particular test. So a conventional 
uh, value of 0 0.05, uh, that's a, basically a conventional threshold for judging statistical significance. So if that, if the p-value that's given right here, which is 0 0.769, if that's greater than our conventional alpha of 0 0.05, then that would be an indication that we have homogeneity of variances uh, assumption being met. So that appears to be the case uh, right here. Now I do want to mention there are other ways of evaluating this particular assumption. This is just kind of a quick way of looking at this assumption in our current demonstration. Um, so given that that assumption seems to be met, then we would want to interpret the t-test results that are provided in our first row where it says equal variance is assumed. So the next set of output that you see in is the t-test results, the degrees of freedom, and then you see right here we have the p-value. So this is the t-test associated with our um, our tests. So this is the observed t-value. We have our degrees of freedom, and then right here under the sig two-tailed, this is called a p-value. So basically, uh, if we compare this value against the conventional alpha of 0 0.05, you can see this value is less than 0 0.05, so you, that would be an indication that we have a significant difference between the two groups. So that would lead us to infer that there is a difference in population means between uh, persons identified as male and female on our perceived threat measure. You can also see we have this mean difference right here. This is just uh, simply computed by taking the mean for males and subtracting the mean for females. And then this right here is just the standard error of the difference in means. Now, if our assumption of homogeneity of variances had not been met, then rather than using that first row information, we'd be using uh, the information that's contained in the second row. And you can see right here that basically the results would yield the same conclusion about the difference in population means. So as I noted before, um, be sure to check out the PowerPoint. Uh, this is basically from example one in that PowerPoint. I go into a lot more detail uh, concerning interpretation, so be sure to check that out. But that just uh, basically concludes our demonstration of the independent samples t-test using SPSS. Thanks for watching.